Hi there, Emma Drew here and welcome to another episode of Confessions of a YouTuber, the podcast that makes YouTube simple and gets up close and personal with successful YouTube creators, helping you understand what it takes to grow your YouTube channel the easy way. I'd like to thank TubeBuddy for sponsoring today's show. TubeBuddy is a free browser extension that helps you easily manage and optimize your YouTube channel. It's the YouTube channel tool I personally can't live without. For more information, head over to TubeBuddy.com or check out their link in the show notes below. Today, I've got a really funny and talented guy and he has got a channel called Sea Dog. He's got over 600,000 subscribers and over 46 million views. So he's pretty hot property at the moment. So let's dive in and welcome Connor. Connor, are you there? I am. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. Actually, for people who don't know you or your channel, can you just describe a little bit about what it's about and also like how it all came about? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, mainly, it, it, it's changed a lot over the years, but right now is what I'd say is if there is something silly that I can do, I, I will probably do it for, for hopefully what is a funny video. <laughs> if I find a strange website, I'm like, let's do it. Let's mess around here. Um, but it's normally always comes back to around anime somehow. I'm a big fan of anime, so that's uh -huh. how I got my start. Yeah, well, I'm just looking at it. I can see it's got a lot of anime. It's very anime focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shifted a bit now where it's it's uh, not so much anime, but it's still, I, I, I talk about anime and the kind of anime like culture, if you will, the online mm -hmm. kind of way of mm -hmm. being silly. That's, so yeah. are you actually an anime artist yourself? Oh, no, God, no. I'm awful. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm, what's your background? Why did you, why did you go for anime? Um... When I was in high school, university period, I was really, really into anime. Like, uh, more, yeah, exactly. People were right. like, oh, God. <laughs> that yeah. huge anime fan. Uh, and I loved I loved doing voiceover. And I'd been doing voiceover for a while. And I thought, why not, you know, try and combine the two things that I love and uh, do some impressions of uh, anime characters. And somehow there was a, a market for that. Uh, and then grew that out. And then kind of pivoted more to be personality oriented. Uh -huh. So does that mean, did you have any sort of professional training or, or actor classes? Um, I'd done a lot of classes and I'd done a lot of training, but nothing crazy and nothing professional. I never had a degree or anything and never mm -hmm. went to school for it. But uh, I'd been doing, uh, I'd been doing some professional work on the side before I actually started my YouTube channel, but it was very, you know, very hit or miss. I, it wasn't very reliable. Mm -hmm. um, but so, so you're really self-trained, aren't you? Uh, for the most part, yeah, yeah. I got I got self trained, and then I started once I, uh, you know, once the YouTube had started doing pretty well, I had the income to start, you know, paying for nice classes in London, uh, yeah. <laughs> which was a, you know, was fantastic because then it was, oh, okay, I know that I'm doing something right, and then they, you know, push you in the right directions, and I've been doing uh, some work for some commercials in London, mm -hmm. um, do various voice roles in games and whatnot. So uh, the YouTube is the main thing, but I, you know, I've been doing professional voiceover for, um, gosh, maybe like two three years yeah so um is that something where that you want to do in the future uh I, yeah i'd love to i think you know because i think with, with youtube you have to be realistic and be like you know how long am i going to be around for um <laughs> <laughs> and de definitely it's been a kind of thing of okay well i want to you know keep beefing up my resume in terms of voiceover and voice acting um for you know when eventually i want to kind of maybe you know focus more on the voice acting than the youtube but but right now i'm having so much fun with the youtube yeah. and it makes it makes so much sense to keep you know pushing the youtube mainly um so i focus a lot on youtube more right now but yeah. i would like to definitely do that more in the future uh-huh so have you actually been approached by any anime companies oh sadly not it, the, the way with how anime works is that mm -hmm. you can't if you want to be the english voices for them you do need to be in the right location either texas or la um uh -huh. So, and yeah, and you have to audition, sadly. Uh, so uh -huh. Even if they asked me, you know, it, it, yeah, it'd be very rare. Right. Okay. Well, things are changing, so of you course. never know. So actually, tell me a little bit about your audience, because again, just looking at your channel, it's, oh it's a very mixed. Um, I can see that you've got like um, a ton. This, you sort of do um, live film as well as there's quite a bit of anime yeah there's a there's there's a few series is that i okay. used to do a lot more but the only series now that i currently am actively doing is the one with the like with anime all like all anime style and my voice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so who does and, the anime then 
Oh, so I, I, I find I have a lot of artists that I pay. So I'll pay someone to do the thumbnails, someone else to do the sprites, uh, backgrounds different. And then, you know, it's all a big collaboration expensive wise, but hey, wow. it's, it's, yeah. it's good. Tell us a little bit about your audience. I mean, are okay. they a very yeah. engaged community and do you get a chance to interact and engage with them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really, really. Yeah. I, I, I'm blessed to have a yeah. community that is. What uh, are they like? Active. Uh, the the typical demographic yeah. is, uh, I'd say around. I mean, YouTube says plus eighteen, but I don't know how accurate that is. Yeah, I, I'd have to say around thirteen to eighteen, and it's about. I think last time I checked was about seventy percent female. Mm -hmm. It used to be like ninety five percent female. Wow. Um, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been trying to be less, you know, oriented at the whole pretty anime boys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and more focused on you know just generally trying to be entertaining. Uh, yeah, and that's brought it down a, a lot, but you know, it's growing quite a lot. So. Yeah, so actually, because you do a few prank type videos, don't you, as well? So perhaps that's drawing in a little bit more of the male, sort of yeah. male or, yeah. or, or the younger generation. It, it, yeah, it younger very generation. much depends what yeah. I'm focusing on because I do a this is, I don't know how familiar you are with anime. There's a, there's a type of genre called yaoi. Now, <laughs> I hate to have to explain it. So yeah. actually, ya yaoi is the it just means like normally that it, it's like gay focused. So okay. It's, you know, two boys who, uh -huh. you know, and it's supposed to be really pretty, really well drawn. And if I do anything with that, it's immediately female, because um, that's you know normally focused towards uh, a, a type of person called a fujoshi, which is a woman who likes these kind of stuff. There's a lot okay. of odd terminology in the whole anime thing, but I do yeah. I do a mixture of things. In terms of actually talking to your audience or engaging with them, how do you how do you kind of like get feedback from them or sort of directly engage with them and do you do stuff off youtube or do you just mainly keep it to the comments that they put on your chat on your videos um i i mainly do i'd say the best way that i interact with them is most certainly conventions i, I go to a lot of conventions um i think uh -huh. i've got six more until august at the moment well wow, that uh, must keep you busy yeah, yeah and they're always yeah. all uh, abroad so I actually, yeah, I just got back from one in Yorkshire, but that uh -huh. was that was uh, nice because it's only a two hour. Train to <laughs> yeah, I have uh, a few. I have, I think, five in US and Canada in the next two three months. Uh -huh. um, so, do they invite you over? Yep, yeah, they invite me uh -huh. over, and then we negotiate. You know, well, you know, I, I you know, I, I, it's not really feasible for me to pay my own flights every time I want to go. So, mm -hmm. they, you know, they cover costs. Mm -hmm. and, um, then you know they they might give a, a you know a typical like appearance fee and then you know I might like sell uh, like prints that I get made from like artists and whatnot so yeah it's 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 a really you know it's it's fantastic because one I get kind of a mini vacation most of the time it, <laughs> it's it's work but it, you know it's a vacation mm -hmm. uh, and then you know I get to interact with my audience which is they're just super sweet so yeah. so when you actually so it must be quite different from so when you go to those places to say like I don't know going shopping in the supermarket or something do you actually get recognised then when you go to these places when i go to a convention yeah. i'm like yeah. hey guys i'm going so it, it happens quite a lot you know yeah. like, with around the venue but you know when i'm here like no god no i don't think anyone in in london yeah uh, i i've been i've only even noticed once in public and i was dressed awfully and i was like oh <laughs> god no please it's like no it's not me <laughs> yeah it's just like no no please not now don't take a photo um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. In terms of normal interaction, I I I'd say Twitter is my go-to. I, oh, I seriously, right? I, I find that because I'm so silly and like I guess you know my humor is so like you know meme oriented. You know, mm -hmm. very like my comment section is just all memes. I love that. Don't get me wrong; it's <laughs> I, it's fantastic. People people will tell me if I you know if I do something that they don't agree with, but yeah. for the most part, I'd say Twitter because it's more direct and I get mm -hmm. like it's a lot more manageable. Uh -huh. I find the YouTube comment section to be uh, an interesting place to say the mm -hmm. least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you get your ideas then for your next videos? I mean, if you do, do you get them well, from your fans? From your uh, or... rarely. I find. <laughs> <laughs> I hope none of my viewers watch this. Um, <laughs> if, if my viewers give me uh, ideas, they're normally not too great. I feel because I feel that I've always said audiences don't know what they want. Fair enough. I, you know, they'll tell you what they want, but if you do the same thing over and over again, they'll very quickly get bored. And as someone who has had many things that I've I, I've done many series over and over again, yeah, like, you can see a gradual decrease in interest over time. The more you do it, you know, once so it reaches its peak it will eventually start to slow down it's it's it happens every time and yeah if I, if I people are like oh i want yeah. more of x because mm -hmm. 
I, I can't think of this random thing mm-hmm. that you're going to do next, mm-hmm. you know. So when you meet your fans, what do they actually say to you? Oh, my. Uh, they're normally just super sweet. Like, oh, I love your stuff, you know, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. hey. Uh, or they just do a little meme insult at me. And I'm like, uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, you. <laughs> inside jobs. Oh. Yeah, yeah, inside jokes. Yeah, yeah, inside yeah, jokes. Yeah. They're Great. super sweet. I, I've, yeah. I've, ha- I've never had... I've had two, like I've had one or two odd experiences, but for the most part, everyone's so pleasant and so nice. Yeah. I'm really fortunate. Yeah, and what does it feel like then to to have that that so, support? I guess it's a gigantic ego yeah. boost occasionally. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 super, yeah. it's nice because you know I I feel like we, you know with YouTube it's so easy to get stressed out and so easy to you know, yeah. you know ooh YouTube mm. burnout scary. Um, mm. It's nice to have you know that group of people. You know, if I have a tweet on on I tweet out like oh, I'm frustrated or I'm yeah. so annoyed that you know I can't figure this out or if this video isn't doing well, yeah. people are, people are always like yo take a break, put your feet oh. up. You know, people oh, are always so quick to be like, yeah. it's fine, just take care of yourself, and it's really yeah. really like nice to see that. Really supportive, isn't it? Oh, it's so really supportive. amazing. I'm, I'm spoiled in every way. Yeah, and I think to a certain degree they understand you more. And you understand your audience more than anyone else, more than the media, more than YouTube itself, more than oh, certainly, your, your family, your friends. It's like you have that connection and you've got that understanding. And it's a bond, isn't it, really? It, yeah, it is. You know, to, I totally understand each other. My YouTube's my baby, you know. Mm, yeah. I, I've been, you know, building this up for years and uh-huh. uh, and and to have like such a pleasant audience with it, yeah. it's it's so nice. And I've noticed I, that. I've got yeah. respect for them. Yeah, I, I noticed that with um other YouTubers, they seem to have this enormous love for their audience and they're quite protective of them. Yeah, no, you I do, when you sometimes you'll talk to people and you know, like they'll make a quick jab, you know, as a little joke, and it's like, ah, yeah, funny. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, man, that's like my it's like the one yeah, thing that that's like, my baby <laughs> yeah, you're talking on. about. <laughs> yeah. they, do you feel quite possessive you know, of them? Yeah, you know, and I'm more than happy to, you know, have a little gag or a joke when my, you know, my audience does something that I'm like, oh, maybe not. But, you know, for the most part, they're, they're super sweet and super supportive. And, yeah. You know, I really do have a lot of respect for them because, uh, you know, for the most, like, I've had an amazing experience on YouTube. Mm, I know. Tell us, like, which is your favorite video yourself? Oh. You know, wh- which one was, like, one of your, your favorite ones to film or create? I feel, I feel like it's... Is it is it terrible to watch your own videos? I feel like there there is like one or two videos that I can go back that I've made and I can genuinely enjoy like a lot. Normally the ones I haven't edited. <laughs> no, listen, if it's not good enough for you, it's not good enough for your audience. No, no, yeah, there definitely, definitely. I recently made okay, definitely the video I did with J. Michael Tatum, who is the actual voice actor of a character called Sebastian, who uh-huh. I impersonate an awful lot, and I did prank calls with him. Mm-hmm. I think you've seen it. Um, <laughs> that one I, yes. I absolutely adore because yeah. that was just. That w- that was just a, like a pure fun. Like there was no part of that that like an hour recording session that wasn't just an absolute blast. And those are the best because you know yeah. it's not a problem of oh how do we get this ten minutes out of this? It's how, how do we not get twenty? Like how do we not go over twenty minutes? <laughs> how do we shorten this? Yeah, uh, and then also about two months ago, I released a video where I actually made. Um, it's called a I, again uh, referring again to this word uh, yaoi. I made uh, a Japanese company who I work with an awful lot. Uh, they approached me and asked me if I'd like to make an audiobook based on one of their properties, which if if you don't know, with Japanese companies and their licenses, especially with anime, they are very reluctant to give it away to anyone or let mm-hmm. anyone work away on it. They didn't actually give me the license, but they allowed me to create a project yeah. uh, on the the work, and it was fantastic. And I made a whole like, documentary around it all, but the whole wow. process of me from start to finish making this audiobook, like casting people... Uh, the mixing, the scripting, all of it, and uh, made for like a forty-minute video, and people loved it, and oh, it was crazy because okay. it was such a change of pace for me because I'm I'm so used to being like, ah, I'm an idiot, you know, let's go do something silly, <laughs> let's do another prank, yeah, yeah. Whereas so you actually did a kind really of a docu documentary type video. Yeah, d- dare so... I say that word? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> well, I said it say... for you. Yeah, you can't say that word on YouTube now. That everyone going Shane Dawson? Is that you, Shane Dawson? <laughs> Going back to that video you were talking about, I'll make sure that I put the link to those those videos we've oh, mentioned you, into you, yeah. into the show notes. Actually, going back to sort of Japanese companies, I remember I used to work for a Japanese company way back. I won't say when. Um, they probably don't exist anymore. But I sat opposite a lady um, who was Japanese, and she would every day, every morning, she would speak to her best friend, or at least that's what I thought. And she would just pick up the phone and say, "Mushy, mushy." And I thought she had her best friend's name was Mushy Mushy, like for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> and 
<laughs> until recently I did actually find out that it was just the sort of the welcoming when you pick up the phone. So that was yeah. quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. It's uh it's a very different culture. Very yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. What I want to ask you now is a little bit about the success that you've experienced. I mean, clearly you're a, a very successful YouTuber in terms of your subscriber and views numbers and all that kind of thing. But how would you actually define success yourself? See, I, I you know, I, I don't feel like I'm that successful, but um, I feel like, you know, I've, I've got a comfortable channel. I don't know, because I, I, a lot of my friends are so much bigger than me. So I feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel so like, uh, it's good because it keeps my ego in check though as well you know like <laughs> it's like oh okay I'm not, not getting too big for my shoes but um yeah I, I don't know I I don't really feel that successful I feel I feel like I just do what I I, I do I don't I, I feel like there's I, I feel like I'm just getting started is that is that oh, that's good say? yeah wow, I feel that's like amazing I'm, I feel like I'm just getting into my stride now. I've, I only now do I feel like if you'd asked me two years ago if I was happy with my channel I'd have said no right um yeah because I, it that's probably, when I met you, I think <laughs> it, it was indeed, and I definitely wasn't happy with where my channel was. the The problem was is that I I think you'll get this from a lot of YouTubers as well is that I started making one type of content and it was not what I wanted to make long term. Mm -hmm. And the, and I was very much trying to get out of being associated with only by because people used to call me they'd be like oh it's like Sebastian you know oh. which is one of the characters I play. Wow, yeah, that's interesting. And for me, it was very frustrating because I'd always, the character that I was playing was most certainly not this character. It was just the voice with mm -hmm. me, me being me. It was me being this like sassy kind of over the top character, which was, was not the character at all. And I was doing this character for a very long time, like a year and a half, just only characters, like different shows, different anime. And, you know, I, I felt that like it was just my personality, but just with this like little convenient like wrapping that would, you know, get people in. Yeah. So, for a long time, I'd say about a year and a half, two years, I was slowly trying to get like, you know, drip feed content that was more, you know, me. And it was yeah. for me uh, to my audience, but it, it was lacking a few things. And I think I didn't get that till later on. And that's when it started. You know, if I upload a, a video now that is just anime focused, mm -hmm. get yeah. a lot less views than the ones that I do with me. So it sounds like you've worked quite hard to sort of change track a little bit. Very much so. And I tell YouTubers this all the time is that if you're not happy, you can't just like, you can't just make a video going, I'm changing my, my content. Everyone, please keep watching. You know, you have to, it's very hard to like wean your mm -hmm. audience onto new content and you can't, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't expect them. It's naive of you to think that if, especially if you have, if you have over a hundred thousand, how can you expect a hundred thousand people to change what they want suddenly? No. Um, no. Sure, sure. Ten thousand might stick yeah. around and yeah. watch what you're making, but mm -hmm. realistically, you have you have to be honest with yourself, and you have yeah. to you can't lie to yourself if you want to do something like that. You have yeah. to be you got to be like, all right, people don't want this. How do I make them want it? Well, there, there is that avenue to take because, like you were saying earlier, you know, often you know best. You know, exactly, I exactly. I, I could sit there and, and complain like a lot. Of, I've not to you know be mean to anyone, but I do see a lot of people who just. They'll more than happily go to Twitter, be like, oh, I'm not getting the views I need. Mm. Oh, you know, you, you know, and it's like, well, you know, maybe if you sat down and honestly just looked at your channel and asked yourself, you know, what am I doing wrong? Are, are my thumbnails bad? Like, you know, are, are, my, are my titles not quite like, you know, enticing enough? Yeah. Is, are, yeah. is, the, is the pace of the video too mm -hmm. slow? You know, mm -hmm. I, it's, it, I think if you do want to pivot, you should be taking uh what was always core to your channel over like what was always the, the highlight was it the humor was it the, yeah. the educational was it was it the informative yeah. the editing like so it's really breaking it down isn't it into yeah, the you, different mm -hmm. parts and seeing what pe what resonated with people what most definitely most definitely i, I think you have to be on like brutally honest yeah. with yourself but i think like with you that. i mean you obviously built your channel but then people started to warm to you as a personality right yeah. So maybe yeah. that allowed you then to start to slowly bring in a few other uh, video types or format types. Definitely. Like the, I, I, the live I, action. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think you have to be careful. You have to just, you know, I, I would do it every now and then, you know, I would just get them and then I, you know, some of them started doing really well. And then, you know, once one of them does really well, you can kind of, you kind of have a, like an opening to mm -hmm. be like, okay, I can capitalize yeah. on this now. I, yeah. can, I can start inserting more. That's really quite interesting actually, because obviously when you get a, video that is doing well or goes viral really within your niche and stuff um that's where the momentum starts and in some ways you have to kind of have a few like that to feed your audience 
because if you just do a one-off you, you need to keep that m- momentum going if you don't have any ready you know yeah. that's where sort of the burnout can come into play if you're not prepared definitely definitely because you've got to capitalize on the need for your fans or your audience who, yeah, I, who, who, who want more of that it's it's about understanding who your audience is and the reason why they enjoyed the video if you can figure out like to a t like what aspects of the video they enjoyed you can then start to incorporate that into other things you know like i i very much learned that like it's my kind of slightly awkward but like uh because I, you know, I can be, I can be kind of awkward, you know. But mm-hmm. it's like it's 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 a kind of humorous kind of oh god, like a little bit of cringe in there on purpose. And I try and always capture that kind of like style. I try, I try not to go too far from it. But you know, when yeah. I have done of recent, you know, it's been I'd say pretty, it's pretty, pretty successful. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think my my audience trusts me now. They they trust me to you know mm. that I I take my what I what I'm making my videos very seriously and what I present to them is that mm-hmm. you know I'm not lazy and I try to. I won't. I will just won't upload a video if I don't think it's good enough. Like mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of YouTubers who, they're like, oh, well, it's the deadline. It's got to go up. Yeah, I mean that's what what makes you a an influencer, really, a, and also a reputable influencer, someone who is mm. authentic, and is themselves, and you can do it just for the sake of it. So, wh- when did your YouTube career actually become a full time thing? Full time. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like you are doing this full time, right? I am. Yeah, I am yeah. doing this full time. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing it full, like as in nothing else entirely, because I was doing the first uh, year or two, I was in university and I was doing it, uh-huh. uh, bouncing an engineering degree. Um, <laughs> Useful? Uh, I mean, it's 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 had its moments of usefulness in, in this <laughs> career even. Having that degree is, uh, it, it's a very good degree to have. I, mm-hmm. I, I did finish the degree and I got a you know, two one in mechanical engineering. And, you know, uh-huh. it's 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 been quite helpful to have at times. Um, uh-huh. But also, you know, it, it's a great thing to fall back on. Yeah. So I started full time around July of 2017, I believe. Before then, I was bouncing okay. university and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I wasn't making much money, and I decided to move to London. And the month that I moved, I had was one of the. I think it was the worst month I'd ever had on YouTube. So that was terrifying for me. <laughs> um, had you just no? So you'd started your channel a year before that. I saw my channel two two years before. Two that. years before that. Oh right. Okay. Uh, so oh, two, two years okay. roughly, and I'd been building mm-hmm. it up, and I think I right. had around, gosh, maybe 150, maybe just over 100, uh, and I was making maybe just over a thousand pounds a month. Um, Good. Yeah. And my rent was like 600. <laughs> oh. So it was a, it was yeah. an interesting gamble. It's a close shave. Yeah. The, <laughs> the thing was is that you know for me, my 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 mental happiness is very like. I think it, it's, it goes one on one with the quality of my, my content. So yeah, for me, I, I, you know, I just, I wasn't happy living in Wales anymore. And I, I just didn't really, I just, I, I wanted to. Is that where you're from? To, yeah, I'm from, I'm from North Wales. Okay. And living with my parents was, uh, I love my parents to death, mm-hmm. but I, I just, I just can't create my best work when I'm in a house with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, yeah. Sometimes creators just need to be by themselves. Yeah, uh, and I moved to London. It was terrifying. Um, never like I, I completely like bit the bullet on it, and I, mm. I had honestly I have no reason to live in London. I could have easily had like commuted to London for. So I'll just I choose to. the most expensive city in the world. Yeah, because I, I, I was going to London two, three times a month, and I was just sick of yeah. commuting. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to move here. I have a ton of friends here. Yeah, see how it goes. It and honestly, it's it's yeah. been the best experience of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and living here has been extremely convenient not only for like daily life but also especially for you know the youtube channel being able to yeah. go to events uh mm-hmm. being able to being at close to an airport uh <laughs> has, been, has been absolutely helpful yeah. Yeah. um being close to studios like everything it, it's been a fantastic thing for me so what opportunities did youtube give you so you moved um, to london and obviously things weren't your channel wasn't doing so great what happened what what turned it around and, and what opportunities did you feel that um, youtube gave you I so I remember I, I I distinctly remember I uploaded this one video which I thought was going to do well, and surprise surprise it's, <laughs> it, it absolutely bombed. It, it, it got like I, I don't think that I'd always ever, happens. I don't think I'd ever gotten uh, like a, a that low amount of views in twenty four hour space, and I was like I was destroyed. Like I was like oh my god. So for the following month. I went, I like kind of like regressed back into, instead of experimenting, I went back Mm. to the whole, what I knew was working. Mm, Okay. And then after about a month, I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to do it again. 
I'm going to try and push myself. And what what started happening was around this month is that video that bombed started mm -hmm. getting a ton of views. Wow. Uh, and I remember the first week it got like 10 or 18,000 views. I think it's on like 500,000 right now. Wow. So normally I'll what would happen is the video bombs, it levels out and you never yeah. see growth, but it started doing it. And I think that gave me like the kind of win in my sales, mm -hmm. capitalized on it, started pushing myself more to do more um, kind of more personality driven things. And then I also, at that time, I think I started working with an editor who greatly helped me. Not only did he push me to do the ideas, I was like, oh, I don't know, like, it's not my normal stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. He was also, like, not, not having to not edit your own videos at mm -hmm. times just becomes a necessity, I feel. Yeah. Um, because I feel like you, you're so biased towards hating every moment of it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> because sometimes you, the, the, the process of recording can be so stressful. That, yes, you know, it can be. Um, and so, just a lot of energy involved in that. that... Yeah. And then I also started um, working, uh, I made, uh, close. I actually, oh, actually, yeah, no, sorry. I know I'm just, I know I'm rewind. Yeah. Um, around that time as well, I, my friends, uh, were all going to Japan, my YouTube friends. Uh, uh -huh. and they were, why like, were they I'm, going? Uh, they were just going as a vacation. Okay. And one, one of my friends lives there and he's a big anime channel. I, they were all much bigger than me and they invited me out and I, you know, I didn't really have the money, but I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll just do it. I went out there. Yeah. It was a fantastic time. I recorded an uh, a video with them. Uh -huh. and I feel like that whole experience just kind of made me realize why I'm doing this. Wow. Um, and then also I got a fantastic video out of it. And I, I uh -huh. kind of felt that sometimes just having a big change is, is yeah. what you need to yes. kind of get the joy and the momentum going again. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like it certainly got your mojo back from a place. Most definitely. You know? Most yeah. definitely. And also, I think once I came back from that, a video that I'd uploaded like a week before, which is the prank calls, which... Um, uh -huh. I, I that was a series I brought back at that time. It did really well. That was the first time I'd, I'd brought the series back after doing it because that was the first video I'd ever done was a prank call. Uh -huh, I, I okay. doing the series very quickly into doing my YouTube because uh, I thought it was mean. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then you I, changed your mind and brought it back. Like, you know what? There's a way of pranking. There's way of being, being doing a prank call that's tasteful. Yeah. Well, I think you're right, actually. I think there is a way. And I think you do it absolutely on point, you know, the way you do it. And it works. And I've seen them. They're hilarious. And Thank you. I will put those links down below. So they did make um, me chuckle. I, I think, you know, there wasn't, I think it was a, a I, I would love to sit here and be like, you know what? It was this one thing. It was amazing that got my, but it was very much a, 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 a bunch of little factors and just kind of generally improving my own happiness and having faith in my own work. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like once you get discouraged, if you can't get yourself out of that rut, it's really mm -hmm. hard to kind of refocus on on your goal and, and what you're trying to work towards. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do say, like, you know, within the kind of best practice, you know, stick to what you know, stick to what's working. And that that's the kind of general line. But I think as a creator, sometimes you need to kind of experiment. If you want to change things, you should be able to do that. And be mm -hmm. conscious about what might be working, what's not working. It's not something that you have to change immediately or be so drastic about it. It's something uh, that you can bring yeah. in gently. I, th I think being comfortable is very dangerous on YouTube. I think that you should always be, you know, not, 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 with, not with every video, but I think you should constantly be experimenting. Only because, you know, we've seen it all, all too, too much on YouTube, you know, content creator gets huge off one type of content, keeps mm -hmm. doing the type of content, doesn't change yeah. it up, and mm -hmm. starts to get mm -hmm. burnout because their videos aren't doing so hot. And they don't know what that they don't know what's going wrong because they've been doing the same thing always. You know, they've never had to change anything. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. I, I think I think there should always be that kind of if if you want if you're never uploading a video that kind of makes you nervous, I think I think there's something kind of missing. I, I feel that like you should have a video that's like, oh God, I don't know if this is gonna do well. Oh, it's bothering me if it, you know, I'm so nervous people to see it. What if they don't like it? You know, I feel, I feel like that's kind of important part. Cause there's so many uploads I've done where I'm like, oh, I, I know it's gonna get views. Come on, like Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but I think obviously you once you know your audience and you, and you've you, you've built up that credibility, you can possibly experiment with that. Um, yeah, most definitely. I think once you get comfortable, it's time to be like, okay, cool. Yeah. Now, 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 how am I going to push it further? I think that's right. Exactly. As soon as you get comfortable, you can start thinking, okay, well, how can I jazz this up a bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't. I was trying to. I was, I, what, what I could barely pay rent. I was like, okay, may, maybe I won't be too experimental. <laughs> maybe I'll Stay do the, safe. Yeah, maybe I'll do the videos that. But you know, and also that could have been a death sentence for, for the channel if I'd have kept doing. 
So it is, it is a, you have to sit there and just kind of be like, all right, what's gonna, what's gonna get me that paycheck or what's gonna be a long-term investment, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You constantly have to think about sort of the next stage of your YouTube yeah. career, your, your channel yeah. in effect. I mean, if it's going to be completely different, then it's probably time to think about getting a new channel and putting all your new stuff on that channel uh, and, and sort of sending people over there. Cause obviously if it's going to be completely different, yeah, that might be a way around it. But I think as a creator, you want to kind of keep yourself energized and keep yourself motivated because that was going to be one of my questions, like what motivates you to keep going and to keep creating? Oh, that's a good question. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I have the ability. I feel like I'm, I'm just getting started with mm -hmm. uh, what I can do. And I feel like I'm constantly figuring out like my own uh like it's hard to I don't know how to word it mm -hmm. I, I love doing what I do and I, I I constantly love finding new ways to be better at it <laughs> yeah and so I, you're completely growing the whole time aren't you and experiencing new things yeah I feel like you know I'm getting always better with um like I feel like the 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 humor is just always trying to get a bit more organic and a lot more I don't know I, I love putting a, a situation in front of myself that a lot of people would struggle to find humor in and then I love being able to find a way to make it presentable and funny. I, I love that. And so kind of finding new ways to always find humor in things is is yeah. my goal. And, I, you yeah. know, for example, I, I have a series that is absolutely huge on my channel at the moment where... Mm -hmm. What's that I, called? It's, uh, it's They all say I bought uh, X cosplay from China. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what I do is, is that I buy just terrible costumes of, of anime characters yes. that are made normally made for girls and I'll buy them and I'll just try them on. Mm -hmm. They're and normally made for girls, did you say? Normally made for girls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'll just try them on and I'll give my opinion on them and I'll just crack jokes the whole time. And uh -huh. it, that's literally all it is. And th those videos do it phenomenal on my channel. And I love making yeah. them because it's- Well, they sound of... hilarious. Well, this is the thing is that, you know, on paper when I, when I, I was like, okay, so I'm going to buy these costumes. I'm going to try them on. And my friend was like, okay, but like, what's the, like, what's the like funny part? And I was like, well, I mean, that's going to be the funny part. And yeah. to me, it's like, it's, it's making humor where they're, they're, they're yeah. like, organic, where there probably shouldn't be any or where, yeah. where others might be super awkward. That's what yeah. I'm trying to do. And that's yeah. what motivates me. Um, yeah. And as well, keeping it fresh and keeping it exciting for me, I think. Having people edit most of my videos has been a godsend, and also, it's nice because I I, I have a relationship with my work that I feel is healthy now. Uh -huh. I, I I do the parts where I feel I'm strongest at, mm -hmm. which is recording the videos, coming up with the video ideas. Yeah. That's what I'm best at. Mm -hmm. If I can just purely focus on that ninety percent mm -hmm. of the time, I feel mm -hmm. that I'm I'm at my happiest and I'm enjoying my work the most. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel about sometimes the pressure of like you know having to upload like a video every day or you know three videos a week what do you feel mm. like how do you feel about that is that something that you subscribe to uh you know i do aim for two a week that's what i've been doing for a long time but my mm -hmm. videos are extremely heavily edited and sometimes take multiple days so mm -hmm. you know a video could easily take more than a week itself to make and i'm uploading yeah. two a week so it's very yeah. much a balancing act of many people working on this one project and absolute chaos of me getting this all done you know, if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd have said it, it was extremely important. I'd have said you have to do two a week or more to be successful. Um, but I, I don't know. Recently, I've changed my opinion on that slightly. I don't know if YouTube has changed something in their algorithm or, the, you know, the scary algorithm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I do feel like recently, you know, I, I if the video that I upload is fantastic or people love it, I, you know, I, I just won't upload for that rest of that week. I'll, I'll let the video just sit there and let mm -hmm. it get views. Because I feel like once you upload one video, you kind of take away uh, the momentum another video has and you're trying to transfer it over to a new Yeah, video. I think you've got a very good point there. I've seen that happen with my I, own channels. I think I think if you get a video that absolutely kills it and you see mm -hmm. that it, is, it isn't leveling out, I'd say, honestly, just don't upload a video. Just let it, the moment you see it leveling yeah. out, upload yeah. it. Like, up, yeah. have the video that you're going to upload, yeah. but... You know, Let it marinate for a while, yeah, you know. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I feel yeah. like when you see when you see it start in the analytics mm -hmm. leveling out in views, then I'm like, okay, now you want to give it that kickstart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I so, think it should be a flexible thing, a fle very flexible. Yeah, I guess that's where the whole YouTube number of the frequency of videos that's uploaded does actually become quite academic. It's quite dependent on your niche and your audience. 
And also the level of energy that you can put into creating concepts. What happens to you when you get like, I don't know, writer's block? What do you do? God, that's a tough one. I've, I've, yeah, it's funny enough that I've been struggling with this for a little while. I just find that like, I, I might just be sitting there and I want to work on something, but I'm like, every single video idea I have, I'm like, it's just not, it's not good enough, you know? And I honestly don't know what I do. I, I try to like, I'll watch other YouTubers and I, I, cause I don't like normally, I don't like taking other ideas from other people. Cause I'm like, sure. yeah. but if I'm, if I'm really desperate for a video idea, I'll look around and I'll see if I can find any fun concepts and I'll see if I can kind of make it my own. Like for yeah. a while, you know, I, I, I saw people making videos on the, on the Fiverr service. Oh, yeah. you, and I, I, I think it's such an interesting thing, but the whole time I was like, you know what? Like, no, everyone's done a Fiverr video. You can't do it. It's so old now. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? One day I was like, no, 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 I'm going to do it. I think, I think I can make this funny enough. Like, I feel like I can make it my own where it's like, you know, you can't really compare it to someone else in terms of like humor and style. So I bit the bullet and I just did it. And, you know, it turned out fantastically. And it was one of my best performing videos uh, recently. Um, well, I'll have to check I, one I, out. Yeah. And I feel, I feel that sometimes it's okay to take from other YouTubers or mm -hmm. other ideas as long as you. Well, do for hundreds of years, own. artists have been borrowing <laughs> from artists. Exactly. And that's just the way it goes. And when I say borrowing, I mean, they're being inspired. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know. I definitely watch a lot of youtube it's what i spend most of my time watching mm -hmm. um so i feel that i am indirectly inspired sometimes mm -hmm. or i might you know figure out what's doing well in one of my other videos and i might try and figure out how i can kind of take that kind of energy and maybe into a similar concept or with you know maybe an added layer to it actually going back to you mentioned um how you do quite a few memes or at least you started doing memes is that right <laughs> uh, um, i mean i yeah yeah i guess so i guess so <laughs> okay um well what i wanted to um discuss was your opinion of article 17 and what it means to you and how it might affect your channel being in europe you know, it's gone. It's it's obviously it, it it passed the vote, but I I I struggle to believe that it will get it will actually be implemented mm -hmm. uh, in a, in the severity that people are are implying it will be, o only because it, it's so heavy handed and so kind of silly almost that I I feel that by the time it gets down to implementing it, I I I can't see it being implemented the way it is. Honestly, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And especially with how the internet works, you know, yeah. what's stopping yeah. me from changing my channel location with a VPN to the US or, or Japan, you know? I mean. Well, exactly. And that's what my teenage son's view on it is. So I, he's like, oh, yeah, well, that's yeah. all right. I'll just get around it like this. I, you know, I, I feel <laughs> the internet is one of those beasts that you you can't stop if, if you if you want to try and slow it down. You, you, you can put all sorts of things yeah. in, in the yeah. way, but people that just means people will just default to uploading with a vpn you know i i feel that yeah this is one of those things that i i i, I struggle to see it actually being implemented in the doomsday way that people are <laughs> yeah well uh, i mean if it does i'll i'll sure as hell find a way to figure it out a way around it yeah you um, and uh thousands of other YouTubers, exactly, exactly. so uh, there will be a way forward most definitely i think yeah. I, I i think people should be worried but i i don't think people should uh be thinking oh well this is the end of every european yeah. youtuber <laughs> yeah absolutely no yeah so how do you actually monetize your channel you went you did actually say that you get called sometimes you get uh, invited to a lot of the comp yeah uh, and... conventions are you know they're not a, a very consistent or amazing way of getting <laughs> uh monetization um mm -hmm. i've had a patreon for Gosh, nearly four years, like as long as I've been in yeah. YouTube, really. Uh-huh. How's that, that for you? That's been fantastic. I uh, -huh. uh I'm very fortunate and very blessed to have again a very engaged audience. So if I do ever, you know, have an issue with like yeah. you know, with YouTube or uh -huh. anything and I, I express that, I'll normally see an increase in Patreon, which is super nice and uh, it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, and Patreon is what saved me when I first moved to London because my ad revenue for the month, I distinctly remember this, was just short, <laughs> was just short of my rent. Oh I, wow. I was like, oh God. Which <laughs> <laughs> is tragic to see. Uh, is that so? Did you do a video pleading to your audience saying, well, I no, can't pay my rent? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I, I feel bad doing that. What I did was uh, actually, I think a, a month before I moved to London was um 
I made a video explaining, hey, I'm going to be doing YouTube full time and I'm going to give this a shot. And if it doesn't work, I won't do it. But right now, that means I need a lot of Patreon support. And I remade, remade my whole Patreon, a ton of new like rewards. And luckily, it like doubled to around, I think, at the time, it went up to about $1,000 uh, a month which was then that's amazing just about it was just perfectly mm -hmm. comfortable where i could mm -hmm. i could you know live quite you know fine you know it wasn't there wasn't anything crazy but it was enough you know uh, yeah because obviously yeah. after tax and whatnot so uh, do you ever have like um sponsorship deals or brand I deals do. i do i'm very i'm very reluctant to take a lot of them uh yeah. only because i feel that Unless I can, I have a fantastic idea to make it a funny or a service that my viewers could use. Yeah. Um, I'm very reluctant to take it because I, I took a brand deal once that was just completely not for my audience. And I just, I felt so stupid after it. Oh. Because <laughs> I, yeah, and I, 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 I won't name who because I don't want yeah. to get into it. But yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I, and after that, like, I was kind of very picky. Um, yeah. I work with one brand a lot who I, because they, they promote manga. Um, so, they promote uh, what sorry uh, manga like uh the anime comics okay and that's like perfect for my audience and they're fantastic with me they trust me and they mm -hmm. the first um actually it's, i have a really funny story with this yeah so my deal was with them is that because a lot of brands i'm sure you're well aware with if you've worked with them is that yeah. they, they demand to see the content and uh, need to approve it before it goes live yes uh, and, and, you know, I completely understand and recommend that every brand who wants to work with me does that. <laughs> because I 100% will push it. Like, I, I am happy to admit that I will do that. Because, you know what, <laughs> I, I'm i all for the humor first and the brand deal is second. I, you know, I don't care if they're giving me, like, you know, thousands of dollars. I'm like, I, I want this to be the funniest video. And if that, if you want me to gut the joke, I'll be very, hmm, <laughs> about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this this uh company bookwalker they're amazing and if you yeah definitely check them out they've 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 been okay. absolutely amazing to me uh my deal with them initially was that you know they i would just make the content and uh they wanted to see it the first time around but mm -hmm. every time since then i've just uploaded it um, so you know wow. fingers crossed yeah <laughs> oh well actually so i'll put the link to one of your videos your yeah product, yeah um your brand deal videos so, in the show notes that people could see how you've gone about it and how, how it worked for both you and um the brand yeah so this first sponsorship i did with them it's, I yeah. think it's a great, great story i had this prank call video and i was like huh i wonder if it would be funny if I called up these, like, uh, the Indian tech support, like, scam people, um, I don't know if you, you know, I'm sure you've gotten a call yeah. where they're trying to tell you that your computer's broke and then that, that they're Microsoft. Yeah, or that you've had an accident. Yeah, yeah. I thought, <laughs> I had this genius idea at the time, a genius, quote, quote, genius. I thought it would be hilarious if I just kept calling them up and promoting this product to them. No context. Just the mm -hmm. moment they picked up, I would start talking about this product to them in, this, in a funny voice. Yes. Uh, and so what I did was is that, I found because there's a lot of ways that you can find these numbers uh, online. Okay. Um, and I have a service where I have an application where I can change my phone number at any time. Fantastic. On, on my PC. Wow. So <laughs> what I would do is I would I would call up these people and I would say, hey, you can you can get manga by using the coupon code thing. And I would you know I would I, I would kind of mess with them a lot. And I would every time they'd hang up on me, they block my number. So of course i just changed my number and called right. again immediately after and i would do this for about three hours just uh -huh. until they just got absolutely frustrated like swearing at me really? you know, telling me to like you know awful kinds of things and yeah. all i would do is just keep promoting the product and so what i did was i cut it down to like two minutes of very intense like <laughs> me calling them telling the thing they hang up me calling them they hang it up and then uh -huh. i'm just gradually getting more and more angry uh-huh and so i made this thing and i was really nervous because this was a japanese company and they, yeah. they don't take that you know they don't really like uh, in my experience they're very strict so I, I sent them this video and i was like hey uh this is my idea and they replied to me and they're like oh this is hilarious um, oh, also, I, ho I hope microsoft don't get too annoyed with us and i'm like no. oh no no no, this isn't microsoft this is like a fake microsoft and i had to explain to them what was like wh who i was calling because in japan this isn't a thing they don't have these companies trying to contact them wow and i was like yeah well here we kind of have this weird thing where they like call you up and they it's not real but they want your yeah. money but it, uh -huh. yeah and then they were like yeah cool go for it so, so they're like fake it. calls basically so the joke was sort of backfired really didn't it with yeah. you doing that uh, well i mean the the joke was is that uh i mean they they were most certainly real but they, they thought it was they thought i was actually prank calling microsoft when i was doing uh, this yeah yeah 
Well, I, yeah. I definitely want. But so they gave the go-ahead on that one, did they? Yeah, and then yeah. I uploaded it, and uh -huh. that was one instance of where the brand deal or the the promotion was yeah. the content. Like it was, it was arguably like the funniest part of the video was me yeah. promoting a product, and which yeah. is a fantastic win for everyone involved. Like, you know, I get an audience who wants to meme this thing and enjoys it, and then I also have a brand that's really happy with the results because they see that people really connect with the 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 product because i'm i'm it's a joke now like it's it's an in gag me promoting this thing because i do it all the time now yeah. so it's it's actually interesting because you know it does take quite a bit of time and energy to to be that creative and to do things in an alternative way and to, to do that promotion you know to use a you know to be, mm. to do a brand uh what do you call it i mean is it a product in, placement inter or integration I'd uh, say. okay so a, a brand integration so you have to think about it quite carefully to be able to sort of integrate it into in a way that's quite innovative that works for both sides you and the brand yeah I, um, it's, it's it's i think it's too all too easy to get into the habit of just reading whatever they give you um and i think also they don't a lot of brands don't seem to appreciate yeah, um how definitely. creative creators are because i've been to quite a few brand jams and i don't know if you've been to any at the youtube space but they have invited a lot of brands in and they're all well-meaning. They've really got good intentions to meet um, creators. And they have this session where the creators will stand up and tell the brand um, an incredibly creative idea as to how they could incorporate a brand like that, like mm -hmm. yours, uh, into a video. And, um, and then they present that all. And so I think quite often the brands, you know, they get excited about the different ideas. But often, in my experience very little comes of it and I think there's just yeah, such a massive gap between how a brand thinks and also the many layers of departments that things have to be signed off mm. to to these creators who come up with these amazing ideas they're not creative directors or you know they are create they are they do everything yeah so I just feel that there's a certain amount of freedom that you have by being able to identify which are the best brands to work with and do they really get you yeah i i agree there's there's been a, so many brands where i'll you know like you said like i pitch a fan what i think is a great idea to promote this product and then they're like yeah we like it but and then it's always that but because they slowly start to like peel away the parts of it that like make it <laughs> is the magic of it yeah and it's like you you know it's like you know i can do this i'll do uh -huh. it because you're paying me but yeah at the end of the day like i I, I I know I can get better results for you if you let me do it my way. Like it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So actually, how do you find your brand? How do you do? You reach out to brands, or do they come to you? They come to me. I I never uh, go after brands. Uh -huh. um, and so, would they come directly, or would they come through an agent? Directly. Uh huh. Um, and I just you know I mm -hmm. either reply, hey, I'm yeah. not interested, or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe oh, cool, can we, we talk about it a bit more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in terms of the actual implementation of your videos, such as like the filming, the editing, the optimization, because mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time, doesn't it? The um, yeah. All of that kind of stuff, because that has to be built into this whole thing, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Do you have resources to help you with that or do you outsource any of that? Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a main editor and mm -hmm. um, I've been working with him for about a year. Uh, and we have a really, re I have a very good relationship with him. Uh, and he's, he also self inserts himself for like comedy purposes at times. It's oh, great. Fantastic. <laughs> it's this really good dynamic where I just yeah. bully him essentially, yeah. uh, occasionally, <laughs> and then he complains. Um, uh, yeah. And it, I, I have him. He's fantastic. And uh -huh. without him, I don't mm -hmm. think the channel would be where it is today. Mm -hmm. um, and I have an artist who does a lot of the art you'll see in my thumbnail. Uh -huh. um, who I've been oh, yeah. working with for a very long time. Wow. Um, and she's amazing. She, uh -huh. she does absolutely amazing work. Um, and she's a YouTuber as well, is she? Uh, no, she's she's yeah. just an artist. Um, uh -huh. And I met her, gosh, years ago uh, through like a contest. And then we just kept in touch. And uh -huh. I was like, hey, do you want to do a thumbnail? And she was like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. and, so and does fantastic. her work appear in your videos as well? Uh, occasionally, occasionally. Uh -huh. And most right. of the time you'll see it in the thumbnail. Um, and that was one thing that I found really crucial was, you know, I could spend hours and hours and hours and, and pay all this money to make this video amazing. But if if the thumbnail doesn't look like mm -hmm. amazing, well, like, what's the point? Actually, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna come to that because I was gonna ask you sort of what advice would you give to people who might be say starting on YouTube or they just want to sort of take their channel to the next level, or they're trying to um, grow their channel. You know, would that that would presumably yeah. that be one of the things obviously to concentrate on the thumbnail. 
you know, it's it's the whole. It, if 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 you're starting out, I tell people just do whatever you want. Like, don't don't worry about the, the algorithm. Don't worry about any of that. Just just make what you want to make, and you'll find a. If you're doing, if you're, you know, you will organically improve if you just focus on what you love. You, mm -hmm. you will. And I think that it, when you start off, you shouldn't be worried about numbers. You shouldn't be worried about, you know, the algorithm, the the thumbnails and all that. Just, I mean, okay, yeah, you should be worried about thumbnails. You should always, <laughs> you should always, you should always like. So let's worry about, about thumbnails. That. That's what we need to think about. Yeah, I yeah. I think YouTube right now is in that like kind of I, I like to refer to it as like the Mr. Beast era, um, mm -hmm. where. I, I honestly recommend people, and it sounds so counterintuitive, but do not make the video before you've decided on what you want the title to be. Like right. if you need the title to be perfect, and you also, mm -hmm. the thumbnail is equally as important. Because right, yeah. without that, doesn't matter how good your video is, mm -hmm. without without a, a title that can entice people and a thumbnail that will get people in, it's it's honestly like worthless. And it, it's it's You're horrible. It's right, hor yeah. it's horrible to say that. Yeah. As a creator, yeah. It's just like, wow, well, yeah, it's counterintuitive. <laughs> it's like, what? I'm just gonna do what my heart wants to do, and that's it. I, yeah, uh, I, I hate to admit it, but that yeah. YouTube is in that place where right now where I do genuinely believe where the title and thumbnail is of equal importance, if not more than the, mm -hmm. the the content itself. That's right, and I play a lot of uh, emphasis on that in my in my YouTube course because the thumbnail and the title need to be compelling enough for somebody to go, oh, well, that's interesting, right? right. And, and they need to be curious enough to be able to click it. And, and that's yeah, that's why I refer to it as like the Mr. Beast era because uh -huh. the uh, the uh, the person who is killing it the most yeah. is Mr. Beast, and no one comes close to his numbers. Yeah, and you look at his titles and thumbnails. Very simplistic, but they, mm -hmm. they're doing what they need to do. It's the very like he has a, an insane title where he spends an insane amount of money, and his thumbnail just shows it, and he always yeah. delivers on it. So yeah. he's just building up this reputation for just delivering on absolutely. And everyone can apply that to their own niche. You know? Exactly, exactly. Because it's not a race. It's not a race to like exactly beat the top YouTubers. Great if you can join them, but you do have a niche. Every niche needs its will have its own compelling subject matter topic um mm. title and i also see it as well like you know if you if you were going to be putting out an advert i mean you wouldn't just sort of throw something together for the title or an image would you no no exactly no. so it's the same thing you're literally advertising your video yeah you know and so i think that's a, a really good um, piece of advice you gave there and stuff so what kind of improvements would you like to see on the platform itself do you think there's anything that would help oh, you personally oh boy. on oh your boy. youtube journey <laughs> <laughs> go on um, this is your chance i don't know i mean how, how are you aware of all the copyright issues that i had i'm not sure how aware i don't are. know i'm not so tell me about it all right so this is a very long story and okay it's... we've got about 5 minutes left okay I, I i can squeeze this in <laughs> essentially I used an outro song for a very long time, and I what I I, I purchased what I thought was a legit legitimate license from the artist. Turns out he wasn't supposed to sell me it, so he didn't have the license to sub license. Um, and so see. my license was not warranted. So about okay. two hundred videos got copyright claimed. Wow! So nearly that sounds like a nightmare. My whole channel essentially. Um, and the problem was is that you know it would have been easy enough to have muted and just you know okay i'm sorry guys but the last 10 seconds of me talking is going to be muted but you know it's i'd rather have that than me lose a lot of money so what happened was is that you know i was really frustrated with youtube because they had claimed the entire video for musical composition based on the last 30 seconds of the video 20 seconds of which is nothing it's just like an outro playing and then 10 seconds of which is normally me talking right so YouTube normally, you know, they you should be able to. It should say where it is on, on the video that the song is playing, and it would let you mute it, which is what normally happens. Mm -hmm. But YouTube had left a little oversight in where people could claim musical composition on the entire video. So this company had claimed that for all of them, so I couldn't remove the claim. Oh gosh, yeah, so, that that is quite a sticky situation. And this all could have been avoided if YouTube uh, had a system in place where people. It, you know, if they have they're claiming musical, musical composition, they should mm -hmm. say where in the video it is, because uh, mm -hmm. you know I was left in a bind, and I'm still kind of trying to get this all sorted. And YouTube has been very helpful with it, but this could have all easily been avoided in the first place had YouTube's copyright system been a lot better. And, mm -hmm. and well, they know, in in effect they actually need to verify where the claim is coming from, and if they it's... do, they do, they do. I, you know, I think it's really unfair that uh, uh, these companies can just claim 20 30 minute videos 
and not have to say what which what part of the video yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah they're referring to yeah and mm-hmm. it, it was just very frustrating mm-hmm. um, and, I'm and i think making that clear it. making it clearer to youtubers and and to audiences as well because i mean it doesn't look good either you know you you went into it quite um you know you did it legitimately you'd bought this license um so in some ways it's harder to explain that to your audience because it looks bad if you're just kind of muting every sort of last 10 seconds of your video or 20 seconds it's like what does that look like you know yeah Uh, i hate it it yeah so so, what can i do yeah Uh, so i think yeah in some ways that's i think where youtube probably does need to put a little bit more emphasis on on how they deal with that i agree i i think the way the corporate system is handled right now is is you know i i it's it's good that they're not directly intervening because i mean they, they can't legally they shouldn't um but the the tools that are there are just so skewed in the mm-hmm. claimant's favor that it's yeah it, it's an it's such an uphill battle to get anything even remotely sorted um because i've had i've had videos taken down before for copyright claims that were that had completely like nothing in them they just mm-hmm. they, someone had literally wrote in one video had said uh he stole my video that's it no, no proof really? no links to anything mm-hmm. and it got my videos taken down um yeah. you know i think I, a lot of youtubers are experiencing this at the moment yeah, and it is a serious thing because it actually inhibits you from wanting to be creative and creating quality content because you know what what of course when, what's the point when you know if i had any ill will towards you i could take down your channel in 15 minutes it's not yeah. difficult at all oh, yeah, yeah you'd, you'd get it back don't get me wrong but mm-hmm. i could give you a scare for two days yeah <laughs> well absolutely and also you can do a lot of damage to its future oh, you know that, so that's, that, that's a whole day where you're not getting revenue as well that's you know how, how many how many hundreds of dollars has that gone you know yeah like it, it's it's no joke like i and i this is also money that youtube's losing so i don't understand why it's not in their best interest to kind yeah. of yeah get a system that's more adequate for everyone yeah i think you know i think it's more it's important for youtubers to continue to lobby them about it and to you know speak to their copyright department and and make them aware and just put some pressure on them i think they Mm -hmm. do feel it but you know again they've got layers of um yeah layers of departments to sign things off so i guess it's a a question of patience i think it eventually it will all i hope um, so i hope so yeah, I think it will all evolve into something that works for the creator. Um, so, you know, I think it's a question of being a bit patient, but also being very cautious for if for your next videos, when you are making your videos, as to what music you're using, what artwork you're using, and really being clear that it is 100% yours so you yeah. can dispute any claims that come in, uh, you know, and you feel completely confident that it's your stuff and fight it that way. Yeah. It's always a bit grey where it, someone is where you have used something, not quite sure where it might have come from originally, and then then you're in a a difficult position. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I guess that's one way of getting around it for now uh, mm. until they can implement some more um, more rigid um, yeah pol- policies on it. I, um, m- most of my the stuff I use is like music, whatnot. It's all it's all like a bit of made for the channel. Oh, yeah, so you get, do you get people to do that for you? So it's I all do, bespoke yeah, I, stuff. Yeah, I, I commission people to do yeah. all this. And kind so of stuff. it's owned by you then, obviously. Yeah, yeah, by then, yeah. The the, uh, point, the yeah. agreement, if you know, if I get someone to make music yeah. for me, it's that I pay you, and mm-hmm. this is, I own all rights to this. Mm-hmm. This is mine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's amazing. It sounds like you've done like you know you've learned so much on your YouTube journey um, about the business side of things as well as your creative side of things and uh and youtube itself and yeah. uh you know um i'd love to talk for for longer but we're coming to an end of the show so no it's worries. been fantastic it's been fantastic fun talking to you um you so thanks for coming on the show but just before we go um i wanted to ask you what's next for you um and what's next for your channel and what what can fans expect from you over the next Ooh. year or so i'd love to talk about one thing but i can't mm-hmm. yet um uh-huh. maybe in like a month or two yeah uh, we'll see something quite big but right uh-huh. now um yeah that's just uh, there, there's something coming i just uh-huh. just gotta wait gotta i'll wait. have to get you back on then and we'll have to yeah, talk about of course, it of course yeah, when you're allowed to talk about yeah, it of course, yeah of course so that's so great so um i wish you all the best with that and thanks again for joining me today and sharing your youtube wisdom with everyone it's been absolutely invaluable i have no idea how useful it is but thank you (laughs) (laughs) thank you thanks again 
Thanks for listening, everyone, and I'll see you next time. If you're looking to rapidly grow your channel but don't know where to start, then join my YouTube Audience Growth Lab, where I take you through the five steps to automate your YouTube success so that you can focus on what you love doing most, delivering awesome content and reaching those viewers. The great part is it's available all year round and I'm offering the first module absolutely free when you sign up today. It's ready and waiting when you are, so now's the time to take action. You can learn more and see what other students are saying by clicking the link in the show notes below. I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.